Change. That's a powerful and scary word in our world, isn't it? Our 28th president, Woodrow Wilson, once said, if you want to make an enemy, just try to change something. And there's been a lot of observations about change throughout history. The ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus once said, there is nothing permanent except change. And there's a Latin proverb that goes on to say that the more times change, the more we change with that. And more recently, Charles Kettering, after which Sloan Kettering Hospital in the city is named, in the early 1900s, he was an inventor, and he said, the world hates change, but it's the only thing that brings progress. If you want to see evidence of how our nature is to not like change, just watch what happens every single time a pastor tries to change something in the church, right? Which reminds me, as I've had a chance to reflect in the last year, you guys are the exception. I'm not talking to you guys. I'm very <laughs> thankful for the way you've generously received me and many of the changes that I've brought to you. It's been a real blessing for all of us together. <clears throat> but what we're talking about today is change. And really what we're talking about is, first of all, a change in time or a change in seasons. I wish I could be saying to you today that we're, we're talking about the change from the cold and the winter and the snow to the sun and the light in the spring, but with the pending snowstorm, that's not what I'm talking about. What we're talking about is today we're closing out the season of Epiphany, the season of light. If you remember, the season of Epiphany began as we celebrated how the light of the star led the wise men to the light of the world, Jesus, and how once they saw that God had fulfilled his promise, he was in the flesh in the manger, they went back to their own home countries and they reflected that light to others. They told the good news. And most of what we heard as we gathered in God's house during these epiphany, epiphany weeks is all about how we reflect the light of Christ, from the calling of the apostles to being fishers of men, to hearing the Sermon on the Mount, and how that helps us be reflections of the light of Christ. And now this season of light, this time of epiphany, comes to a close today as we hear about literally how the light of God's divine power shined through Jesus' face and his garments, his flesh. And what this was, was a moment first for Peter, James, and John as they were there, and for us today, as we have the blessing of hearing about this experience, God making the announcement, the times are changing. What you've been looking for, what you've been waiting for, that's about to happen. So Jesus goes up on the mountaintop. And there on the mountaintop, as he's transfigured, as his divine power shines through, Moses and Elijah appear out of heaven. These are the two superstars of the Old Testament. These are the ones everyone knew about. Moses gave the law. He helped the Israelites get to their freedom in the promised land. Elijah was the first of the prophets, those who would point to Jesus and give the clues and say, this is the one God was talking about. This is the Savior we've been waiting for. So they appear out of heaven, giving us a little bit of insight about heaven. And they show that Jesus is the fulfillment of this. But if that's not enough, because as we know, the apostles were very thick-headed. They were very stubborn. So if they weren't getting that this was a special occasion, then comes the cloud and the voice of God the Father from heaven that says, This is my Son, the Beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. What this is about is what we confess in the creeds. God from God. Light from light. That Jesus wasn't just some really good, holy guy that God had favor upon. Jesus was God and man together. In a miraculous and a special way to remind us that our God walks with us. To change our lives. To help us. Especially in those most difficult times of need. It's interesting to look at what people go about changing in their lives. When they're unhappy with their job, they go and change it and find a new job. Some people, when they're unhappy with their bodies, they try to change their bodies. Some go to a gym, some go to a plastic surgeon. Other people, sometimes because they're not getting along with their neighbors, change where they live. But oftentimes when 
when you look at these things, those people aren't happy with the new changes that they made. Whether it's their job, their house, or their new body, there's still something wrong. Why? Because the change really needed to be made from the inside out. Leo Tolstoy, the Russian author who wrote War and Peace, once said, everyone wants to change the world, but no one wants to change themselves. Mm -hmm. This change in seasons from epiphany into Lent is all about giving us an opportunity to reflect upon how God, in the same way that his divine presence entered into Jesus and shined through on the Mount of Transfiguration, enters into us through the gifts of the church so that it changes us from the inside out. And this time of Lent that we're entering into is a time of self-reflection. It's an opportunity for us to take a look at what we don't like about to take a look at those regrets we have, to take a look at those stumbling blocks, to take a look at those things that we're ashamed of and lay them at the feet of the Lord so that as we gather in his presence as his people, as he enters into us by the power of his spirit, his divine power and light can change us from the inside out. Reinhold Dybar, the Lutheran theologian, wrote that great serenity prayer. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. If you were listening at the end of the gospel lesson, Jesus told the apostles not to say anything about what they had just witnessed. Why? Because he knew they didn't get it. He told them to wait till he was raised from the dead. Why? Why? Because then they would put it all together. Then it would make sense for them, and they'd understand what that power was shining through him. But until then, they had to put the whole thing together. And it was years later, in our epistle lesson that we heard before, that Peter reflects upon this moment on the mountaintop, and he says the following. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. What Peter is reflecting upon is that power of God's word to change lives. That's why at the end of the words of God the Father from heaven, as he said, this is my son whom I love, he said one more very important thing. Listen to him. That's the power that changes lives. Faith comes by hearing as we listen to the word of God coming into us through the gifts of the church. God's spirit enters into us and changes that which needs to be fixed. Helps that which is broken. That's the blessing that we have as the people of God. As we gather here, God's spirit enters us as we hear his word as he speaks to us. God's spirit came upon us as he called us his children in baptism. And literally. In the same way that the power of God shined through the flesh of Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, when we partake the body and blood of Jesus in the sacrament of the altar, he enters into us to change us from the inside out. There's an ancient Chinese proverb that says, if you do not change direction, you may end up where you are headed. We live in a world where we're surrounded by sin and temptation and all sorts of pitfalls, and all sorts of struggles. We have a whole bunch of things we wish were different. And God says to us, come unto me. Here in this place, in these gifts, I change lives. And as we gather here as God's people in his gifts of word and sacrament, his spirit enters into us and changes us from the inside out. Amen.